After releasing the awesome TMNT, Adventures Fall of the Footprint and Back from the Series for the Nintendo Game Boy, Konami were definitely on fire and really helped keep the momentum of Turtles Mania going in the early 90s. A third outing however seemed unlikely, I mean after all, how do you follow up on Back from the Series which to my mind is a wholly faithful depiction of the cartoon series and comics all rolled into one and just had that right balance of challenge and fun? The answer is, Konami didn't, they opted instead to turn the formula on its head and give players a fresh new gameplay style which borrows from this successful Metroid series, but also adds in a smattering of RPG levelling up and puzzle elements. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue sees the Shredder kidnap Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, vivacious Channel 9 reporter April O'Neil and Master Splinter whilst Michelangelo was out collecting a pizza. Returning home and spying the TV still on, Shredder appears and tells Mikey that if he wants to rescue them then he has to go to an abandoned mine on the outskirts of New York City. This time around the familiar side scrolling beat em up stage by stage action has gone and has been replaced with a massive open area with multiple paths, rooms, locked doors and shutters, tons of foot soldiers, robots, lasers and stage hazards. So you assume the role of Michelangelo and you must first work your way through the danger to rescue your fellow turtles. Radical Rescue however doesn't tell you where to go or indeed what to do and it's kind of left up to the player to navigate the map to try and find the right way. You will notice right away that certain areas cannot be accessed yet and this is because Mikey and each turtle that you rescue has a special ability which is essential and also primarily pivotal to progressing further in the mine. Michelangelo can jump and use his nunchucks to float allowing him to slowly descend downwards go across pits of spikes and platforms, Leonardo can use his katana blades to slice through breakable floors, Raphael can access narrow alcoves by literally popping into a shell and moving into them and Donatello can climb walls. So if you go to one of the areas that requires a certain skill and you haven't rescued that turtle then you can't go down that path yet. Whilst this new Metroid-esque area is jam-packed with enemies and confusing routes, it's not as large as you would think and just requires a little bit of trial and error first time round. Unlike the previous games, you can't just slice and dice your way through quickly, as not only are the enemy patterns dangerous, but also plentiful. Not to mention that this time they respawn if you move even a fraction of the screen away from where you killed them. I mean, you can die really easily in this game, so you will need to slow things down and work carefully for the mine. You start off with a small amount of health, but this can be increased by finding hearts, plus whole pizzas are located throughout the mines which will replenish your health and can be carried in reserve if you already have a full health bar. The controls are again really good with each turtle being able to use their signature weapons and abilities, but it appears that Konami have taken a step backwards when it comes to each turtle. You see the problem is, they all share the same life bar. I found this to be really annoying. Part of the reason why the previous turtle games worked were being able to utilise and select each turtle and that each had an individual health bar. It really doesn't make sense not to implement this feature and at least give them all a chance to level up. Whilst this game is not impossible, there are occasions when this feature would have been so useful as some sections can be relentless and I couldn't really implement any kind of strategy because of the health situation and found myself rushing through laser traps because I was being surrounded. Thankfully Konami have implemented the password system so that when you die or reach a certain rescue comrade then you get a password so you can carry on from that point. However, another problem persists in that the password only appears if you die and have at least one continue on the screen. If you die and get a game over, then the password doesn't show up. Okay, you could argue and say, well, just Google the password. Well, yeah, you're right, these days you can, and you can even find walkthroughs for this game. 
But if you want to play this title the old school way, then this can be really frustrating when you need the password. It's also annoying because when you get a game over and if you have the password and manage to write it down, you have to go back into the password screen and type it in again every time you've used up your continues when you get a game over. I mean, why can't I just carry on? Having to do this each time is inconvenient. Just give me infinite continues rather than let me having to keep typing in the same code over and over again. Still, whilst it has its faults, Radical Rescue does kind of work pretty well and may take fans of the previous titles a few hours to get into. It certainly took me some time to really adapt. My first playthrough consisted of me getting completely lost and moving in circles as I tried to find Leonardo. Still, I do think that's kind of part of the charm in this game because you need to use your noggin and look carefully. Quite often it's simply a case of not seeing a ladder or not realising you can jump up to a certain area or platform that's above you. Also, using some shutters early on can actually place you back into an area you've already been to, so expect some trial and error early on as you try and work out where to go. I will say that the effort you put into figuring out this game is definitely worth it. Once you rescue your first turtle, then the adventure really starts to open up and you should be able to adapt to the ebb and flow of the gameplay. Konami also made some significant changes to the bosses. Gone are the familiar faces such as Bebop, Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, Krang, General Trag and the like. And in their place are Scratch, Dirtbag, Triceraton and Scaletail. Defeating them will yield keys which will open locked doors throughout the mine containing either a captured turtle, splinter or April O'Neil. Whilst the boss count has been diminished significantly, their patterns are much more memorable and easier to figure out. I suppose Konami wanted to do something different and decided to overhaul everything and didn't want to repeat themselves too much. And as much as I like a TMNT game with tons of bosses from the cartoon, the bosses in Radical Rescue fit the somewhat dark tone of the game really well. Plus I think running into a boss too often might have proven to be really challenging. The graphics, music and sound, again a fantastic, I mean this goes without saying, this is a Konami game. The sprites are a little bit smaller and have more of a gritty comic book style and each room in the mine has been carefully constructed with an inherent attention to detail. While some areas do look familiar for the most part, there are plenty of new ones to discover and a whole host of traps and challenges that actually increase the further you get through the game. Out of the trilogy of TMNT Game Boy games, this one may well be the hardest as it doesn't hold your hand and it's one you really have to work at to make progress. Plus towards the end it gets incredibly difficult, throwing in a boss rush which has to be done in one go and this includes two fights with Shredder. Now, I would like to say that I have managed to complete the game and beat Shredder but I can only really make it to the boss rush and just can't get through. One upside though is that with each boss you defeat in the boss rush your health bar does get restored but again Konami really should have had separate life bars for each turtle as it would have given this final section a little fairer throwing in a little bit more strategy and would have been more exciting. Still despite these niggles I still think TMNT Radical Rescue is worth playing today if only to marvel at the key changes that Konami implemented in an attempt to try and keep things fresh. If the idea of a harder Turtles adventure appeals to you with some new ideas then definitely check it out as you won't be disappointed. For those of you who want something a bit more traditional then play either Back from the Sewers or Fall of the Foot Clan, both of which I have also reviewed on my channel. So check out those reviews in my Game Boy playlist if you want to learn more about those games. Okay, I just want to say thank you very much for watching my review and I'll see you next time.